disruption, and actually, you hear the word disruption, and we live in the age of disruptions, because in reality, we have more innovations in, since 1997 than we've ever had since the first Industrial Revolution. So, what is it? How do we get there? Considering actually that there's a lot of, uh, every time I give the first class in the, in the business, I used to be the dean for the business school, the law school in hospitality. Usually we try to teach you the difference between being a manager and a leader. You never run into somebody giving you a business card where it says, I am a leader. Well, this is something that's probably going to be next your future job, being a disruptive thinker or officer. So, it's disruptive is something that has changed over the years, if not centuries, and it means a lot of things. It evolved from the, uh, what I call the zero revolution, when we had only uh, the printing in Gutenberg to what's becoming the post chat GTP4. So, I'll start with the uh, quote, you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So, there's a lot of actually skill sets that you do need in modern management, whether you're a chief innovation officer or somebody else. But creativity, disruptive thinking, creative destruction, and breakthrough innovations, they have a lot of things in common. So, unfortunately, we don't reach that level. It takes almost a lifetime and a journey to become a disruptor than it is to be a creative entrepreneur or else. So, I'll start with a, what I would call the, the curious case of Benjamin Button. I don't know if you've seen it. I have been uh, probably, with, uh, if there is another job that I would have done in my life, it would have been a film producer. So, I'll start with take one, take you the steps to the, the first siege, the incubation stage, where creativity starts. This is actually a picture of Toto. I know we have Momo with us here today, <laughs> but this is actually from a very famous movie. It's called Cinema Paradiso. So that kid looks like me many years ago, where actually my house, my apartment was next to a movie theater. So every night I would hear all kinds of movies. Indian, Chinese, <laughs> French, Western, etc. So I became so fascinated, obviously, with the, this motion picture that, of course, my first thing is try to create my own movie theater. You try to do it with candles until you burn the box. Now, this is actually about the first stage, curiosity. And then you try and to scale up, to step up your creativity to start building, creating your imagination world. What happened is, <coughs> you do learn, probably outside of school, a lot of things that we don't know why, and somehow, in the future, they'll be very helpful. So, we're, we used to watch things like the Six Million Dollar Man, and this is remind me of uh, Elon Musk and the new chips in the brain. So, am I surprised today? No, and that was quite 25 years ago. Same thing, the bionic woman. So, thank God, we did watch a few things that they don't teach you at school. Very, a lot of you are probably a big fan of Star Trek and others. Um, what you see on the left side, that's his name, Isaac Asimov. 
one of the most prolific sci-fi writers. He only published about 600 books, on average about two books every other week. This is something we never learn actually at school. About human, we learn about human history, and if you're a good Muslim, you probably have to go to the mosque and always learn about the past, the history, the Sharia, the rise and fall civilization. But not up till today. We still have no curriculum, no abstracts that would shape the future history. And this is something that is a huge dead angle in our education. So the world looks actually, it's weird. Back then, 2000, 2012 looked so far away, whereas 2050, it just looks to me as only past the exit door for some other reason, and I'm not surprised. Now, take two. Disruptive thinking, creative destructions, and innovation. They're very much like, like the yin and the yang. But this is something that has evolved and changed the course, course of history. When we think about disruptive innovations, we always think about technology. And that would bring me probably the second part of my life, where I've been buying companies on the verge of bankruptcy, mostly in the technology sector. So, let's take a look. What does it mean to think different? Disruptive thinking refers to a major innovation system, discovery, preconceived ideas, thinking unconventional, and you get a lot of many synonyms like think out of the box, or how to become a game changer, or disruptor. Creative destruction, this is from actually Schumpeter. If, you're, if, if you've taken any course on entrepreneurship, he is the father of the, the concept of creative destruction. In other words, we do not wait for the products, the solution, to become obsolete, but we have to time the obsolescence, make sure that we have few products, iPad 2, 0, 2.0, 3.0, etc. So here I am, we're starting to connect creative thinking with disruptive mindset, but for business use. Hence the importance of having the different business models. Now, there's all kind of disruptions. Some of them, of course, you don't know. On the first one, that's when the first Gutenberg printing machine came out. The second is the uh, Daguerre, which is basically the first camera, Karl Marx. He influenced millions from around the world, and we had to split the universe into socialist, communist countries, others. Now, some fascinating also disruptive. That's Beethoven. And guess what? He was deaf. And he did manage to create something that is absolutely unique. Uh, so is Taha Hussein, who published more than 60 novels while he is blind. The discoveries of the America, major shift. The Tour du Monde. It became almost like the first fiction book that sold worldwide, probably the, the number one being translated in, in, in every country. In arts, and so much more. So, why disruption is also evolving? Every, every industrial revolution comes with a huge shift whether the steamship, the uh, airlines, the creation of the telephone, the television, uh, the internet, the computer, and I, up to what we call the fifth revolution. Now, this cycle, as we move on, is starting to become faster and faster. What used to take century, 50, 30 years, or five years, as a business model, we start to switch. Now, if you go to the CES, 
there is a new product in every January 8th or 10th. So if you have stock or inventory, as of December, you probably have a problem if you haven't been able to sold it or to get rid of it. So this process of paradigm shift is a really huge shift. It's like the invention of social media, chat GTP, that really brings a huge change. That's what we call a paradigm shift. We don't wait for it to come. Now, more and more, we have to predict it. Now, there's a moment that is so important in this disruption that we call it a tipping point. What is a tipping point? It's that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a tipping point. And we'll show you how. COVID. I consider this the biggest universal masterclass ever, where the whole humanity lived under certain conditions, where we had to face the most difficult challenges, coping with so many disruptive things, chain supply, emergency care, collapse, financial health, what do we do helping these small businesses, prevention of the spread, mental health, media frenzy, risk mitigation, emergency rooms, three million dead people. And guess what? The most, the biggest uh, nations in the world, including the US, weren't able, were unprepared for disruption. With all the, the behemoth institutions, organizations, and funding they had, they could deal with it because they weren't prepared. And there's a reason why we weren't prepared. So, one of the biggest shifts and the biggest learning aspects of this, of the COVID, is the paradigm shift that happens mentally. We were trained to think in a binary way, left, right, La relation de cause à effet. Whereas when it comes to any pandemic, any viral spread, it's something that is non-linear. So we have to think in a non-linear way. In fact, we used to think if you have the majority of the votes or anything that you have the maximum of, you're probably safe. Whereas, in fact, the smallest variant virus that came from India or from Wuhan in China did spread all over in split second. And this is what we call the butterfly effect, which means the most, if you're in business, a small, tiny condition can have a major impact on your business and it could decimate it. AI. Well, the way we felt the, we, we felt actually the pandemic so severe emotionally and everywhere, the whole world take it because we've seen it, we felt it. We had families, friends, colleagues who were sick and some of them who passed away. Chat GPT is very much like that. That is extremely disruptive. Some of it actually the founders, the godfather of Geoffrey Finton, the godfather of AI, he pulled the alarm, quit Google because he thinks this is something disruptive. I'm not saying that I'm against AI. I said, no, we just know how to use it. So you've seen this? 142 prompts to make incredible videos. Now, text to video is something that is amazing. And it means also there's a lot of things that will be, maybe a few jobs there. Um, as the uh, vice president for marketing, for my company in Canada, I, we had to deal with basically to all, lay off all the marketing team, the business developer and the salespeople, and just rely how do we deliver the goods, how to create lead generation, how to pr produce the content, just relying on tools, smart tools. That used to take many people to do the film, the video, the text, and so on. <coughs> Disruptive. 
brain implant, not a surprise. So now, what does it take to get this disruptive thinking driver license where you could run, manage major organizations and take them into the future? So what kind of skill set do you need? How do we harness this disruptive mindset? What are the challenges for the near futures? Okay. So, start with what if. When we have a scenario, one of the first things I do is what if we. Uh, and it's, you can change the whole thing. If I say, what if Amazon or Google decided to make Morocco, Royal Air Maroc and Airlines, they wouldn't think of you as a passengers. It will totally be a different business model. They will think of you as a seamless, continuous consumer. Think out of the box. Big construction. Well, we don't teach the schools at the university. We teach you how to become an engineer. We don't teach you how to destroy. And that's a different mind. So start from the end. I want to start not what the, the so when the uh, Steve Jobs came up with the iPod, it's iPad, etc. They just don't bring out everything at all at once. There is a start from the end. They know exactly where we're going to take you and then go backward to the reverse journey. Preemptive thinking is very important. Anticipation. Adopt adaptive learning system. In other words, I consider every single organization being the, an organism, a living, natural organism, where you, you, and the other ones are agent-based models, and otherwise they're cells. Lead the change, like a music industry. And this is very, very important. It's not about directive management or hierarchical command, but you need it as a symphony. Have the right pitch, because when you want to sell a new, innovative, disruptive idea, technology, or startup, you have to be able to pitch it right. Six thinking hats is the capacity to have a different thinking hats. The marketing hat, the uh, auditor hat, the innovation hats, etc., and the consumer. So those are. Don't be afraid of a judgment because disruption is uncomfortable. Not all of us are very easy and comfortable when somebody comes up with a very disruptive idea. Noise reduction. Enhance your brain power. Find the right pace for shifting gears. Change is, 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 is about the timing. Now, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for too. So we are the change that we need to do every day. Thank you.